Le Mans starts come to sailing. In the latest clip around the world race start video, they show how they adapted the French motor race, Le Mans start, to their fleet leg start. This is the clipper's third Le Mans start and all the crew like the concept. So we're about to do our third Le Mans start. Uh, first two went very well. We've had a little bit of practice this morning. Uh, so yeah, we're looking to do the same again, get off the line first. One minute, 45 seconds, 30 seconds, coming to 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and go. The start was really, really good. The crew all pulled together and did exactly, exactly as we planned and prepared. We uh, did a couple of test runs as we were waiting, doing our man overboard drills and stuff. So we did a couple of practice uh, Le Mans starts and everything went really well. We found ourselves at the front of the fleet. We got over my shoulder here, four other boats who were pretty close up here as well. So we're staying on this tack for quite a while. This is our making tack. So we're just trying to sail faster than everyone. Everyone's up on the high side and we're trimming like crazy, so just just going for the mark as quick as we can. We're all very excited. It's, um, it's a big race for us, so we want to do really well and it's going well so far. Next stop, going to be Qingdao, going to be my hometown, also the hometown of all the 11 Clipper 70s. They were all built there about 10 years ago, I would say. Um, so I'm pretty sure not just me going to be really excited. Can't wait, let's go. <laughs> This is your weekly Global Sailing Highlights show, The World on Water, March 22nd, 2024. There are many hidden parts to an America's Cup campaign where innovation, performance and talent remain unseen. Hydraulics is one such area, so much so, that when Emirates Team New Zealand's new race boat is launched next month, there will be very little of the department's work on display to the public or reconnaissance cameras. The whole system on the boat, like the lifeline or the blood of the boat, is hydraulics and hydraulic oil. Most of the input comes from the sailing team. They need the control for the boat. And then that filters down through the mechatronics team. And then that comes down to the hydraulic department to produce the hardware on the boat in a working condition. There's three different hydraulic systems in the boat. The cyclores that you see are powering pumps under the deck. And they're controlling the sail functions that change the shape of the sails and make the boat go faster essentially. We've got the FCS system which is a foil can system powered by batteries and that's a one design component which all the teams have and that's what you'll see in every manoeuvre where the boat's attacking and diving. And we've got uh, the flight control system which is the, the rake of the rudder, the flaps down underwater and those are moving like a, an aeroplane wing as well. We'd be one of the first people in to do to turn the boat on, fire up the hydraulics do a, a quick visual test and then pressure tests and, and check that the system's going to be functional for the entire day. Daily inspections, maybe twice a day, just to make sure that there's no, no leaking. Along with pre and post sale checks, you're always working on something else, testing and assembling manifolds, making new hoses, and yeah, it's just constantly changing on the boat. It's cool. It's, it's pretty unreal when you see them. I know how they work, but I still have to scratch myself when I see them flying. When I look at it, all the 40s there, we've been involved with those, and the can system on all the 75s. The ultimate challenge at the end is winning the regatta. But on a day-to-day, -day, it's that challenge of probably the biggest success when the boat comes back, and we just do our checks and everything's good. Because then you know that all the modifications that you've been working on actually mean something, and you're actually, you're progressing. And you go home and you go, that was a big day. It's not always easy, and it's not always fun. You appreciate just what we have here. We've got a good group of people that work hard and, and are aiming for the same goal. Three months? Three months. Yes, three months of construction was something. 
Take the boat out of the water, remove the mast, then the keel, inspect the parts one by one, maintain or replace them, optimize the systems, adjust the settings, check the measurements. Their technical team did it brilliantly. Put the boat back in the water after weeks of work. Progress. Exciting. Enjoyable. Rewarding. Complex. Tough. Straightforward. Fast. Under control. Not even a year that we've owned Loxitan now, so we're just starting to get to a point where we feel we know the boat well enough to start putting our own stamp on it, our own mark, and make changes that we think will make the boat better and adapt it for Clarice. So really this refit we focus mainly on ergonomic things that are better for Clarice and make it wrap around her more and adapt towards what she needs out of the boat rather than what the previous skipper may have needed out of the boat. And then beyond that really we've been focusing hard on, on reliability and just redundancy and making sure that we're taking the first steps towards making a boat which is more Vendée ready. So the boat that launches now for the Transats is a large step towards the configuration the way we would like to take the boat around the world for the Vendée. Outside of the sheds in the office, you know, it's been extremely busy planning, 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 looking at all the different logistics that we ha have ahead of us this year, um, moving the team from here, Gosport, back to L'Oreal for the start of the CIC, and then over to the US for New York and uh, Newport, where our boat will be based, and then back again. So really just the whole accommodation, logistics, travel schedule, and then working with our partners and all the different exciting activities we'll be doing with them this year. Le Vendée Globe. Vendée Globe. Vendée Globe. Vendée Globe. The Vendée Globe. Le Vendée Globe. Vendée Globe. Le Vendée Globe. The Vendée Globe. The Vendée Globe. The Vendée Globe. The end of another top-class training camp for Alinghi Red Bull Racing who concluded their final trip to Jeddah, Saudi Arabia with some real demonstration sailing in the upper wind ranges but had to wait for the wind to drop after two slow-mo capsizes, one for each AC-40 in the opening part of the session. Oh. We're here with Rodney Ardern, sailing team manager and recon rep at Alinghi Red Bull Racing. Your sixth day of the team's last trip to Jeddah. A lot went on, we'll let you tell us what happened. We've had a pretty good week, a uh, variety of conditions. Uh, we were hoping to do a few more races on the last day today, but uh, got caught out by a bit of a front coming through and some pretty solid breeze, and unfortunately we just got one race away. Yeah, both boats capsized early on this morning, but you came back and uh, you went back on the water later on in the day. Uh, any damage to the boats? No, everything was good. Uh, yeah, one boat didn't, uh, capsized immediately after releasing the tow. Just had no boat speed to keep it upright. Um, but yeah, I thought it wise to come in and check it all as the breeze settled down and went back out. It was still pretty windy, so held for another half an hour or so and then finally got a race away. So aside from the challenges of today, what's the mood in the team overall after this trip and, uh, and overall in the, in the campaign? I think uh, everyone's super happy. <laughs> Good one, Sophia. <laughs> I think everyone's super happy how the um, how the trips here have gone. We've uh, managed to get through pr plenty of testing, sail testing, and uh, a lot of crew work, a lot of match racing. But uh, now it's time to head back to Barcelona and focus on boat one. So the trips to Jeddah have also been a bit of an endurance challenge, uh, not only for the sailors but for the tech crew and the shore crew, uh, no distractions, high productivity. Has the sail testing and match racing program put you where you want to be in the program? Uh, yes, I think so. We could, uh, I mean, there's always more things you'd want to achieve um, and we pr probably didn't achieve all of them, but I think, uh, yeah, in general, we're pretty happy with our position. What didn't you achieve? I thought of something last night, but I've forgotten what it is right now. Are you ahead of your own expectations overall? Um, 
I think we're happy, happy where we're at. Uh, like I said, we could always do better, but that all just comes down to time on the water and what you can achieve with what you dealt with. We haven't seen any new foils in a while and no new riders at all from you guys. Can we expect a lot of experimenting with different, different appendages when the new boat comes out? I think the, you know, it's pretty limited time left with the big boat, so you've, pretty got, you've probably only got a couple of shots at it. So, um, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see what it comes out with. Do you think the design of the boats will all be in one corner and, uh, and hence at a similar pace? I think, you know, being a second generation of boat, everything, everything will get a little bit closer. Still hard to know. You know, you'd always like to think you've designed a, a nice boat uh, with uh, an advantage, but, you know, until we see the others, it's hard to know. When race officer Ross Wilson called for an early start, the competitors knew they were in for an exciting first day of racing for the 2024 Etchells World Championships in Fremantle, Western Australia. Frio is a beautiful spot to go sailing, and I'm sure that all the competitors will really love what the Fremantle Sailing Club and the organising authority, Royal Freshwater Bay Yacht Club, have in store for them here on the West Coast, said Wilson ahead of hitting the water for the opening day. So it's a beautiful spot to go sailing. Uh, one of my favourite spots here at Frio, and I'm sure that all the competitors really love what the Fremantle Sailing Club and everyone else is putting on for them here at uh, Frio. This is my fifth world titles in the last few years I've had out of here at Frio, so I'm pretty well aware of what happens out on the racetrack, but we've got a high pressure wind warning out for today. <coughs> And then that what really means is we've brought the race forward until 10 o'clock because we see the expected winds to uh, just build from around 2 o'clock onwards. With the intentions of having two races, they won't be the full uh, the two hours. They'll be probably around about the 65, 70 minutes. So we can actually get the first one in and then have a second race starting at before midday and get all the boats off the water by 2 o'clock where we expect it to be over 25 knots consistently. But the Etchells are one of my favourite classes and we've been running Etchell racing for what 20 odd years now and uh, quite a few world titles, I mean, five or six world titles we've done out of Etchells. But they're, yeah, they're a classic boat and um, some of the best yachties in the world I think sail Etchells, which makes them 
one of those uh, unique classes. But it's very professional nowadays, and I think that nearly three quarters of the fleet would be professional, and only a small number would, would be Corinthians in this particular regatta. So it does make it a bit harder for those wanting to get into it, but then you're sailing against the best in the world, so. The first race wasn't too bad, but the second race got a bit windy. Yeah. I mean, I've just got a very good crew, you know. Um, so, I do what I'm told and we get around. Uh, no, we, we, we didn't really get into... Uh, first race, we overstood the first mark a little bit. So we were clean of a lot of the boats. And then the second race, we are in the lead. So, it was a good, good day for us, yeah. Well, you've got to be careful you don't get it wrong, yeah, because you can... You can jibe or you can broach, so two hands on the tiller for someone like me. The big guys may be one hand. Well, I think the forecast is less wind, so see how we're going to go in that. We were pretty quick today, but tomorrow's a different day, and we had good, two good starts, made a few mistakes. So, you know, we, we'll hopefully get better as the regatta goes on, but we're very happy today. Jordi Zama and Nora Brugman of Spain have been crowned 470 World Champions of 2024. After five days of competition in a variety of conditions on the Bay of Palma, the stormy conditions of Sunday meant no medal race to conclude the 470 World Championship in Mallorca. Of course, Jordi Zama and Nora Brugman would love to have seen out the race on the water, but the breeze and the waves were too big for that. But even so, a really well-deserved gold medal for the Spanish on home waters. We are finally 470 world champions. We've been so close many times and obviously it's, we, we are extremely happy with the week. Yesterday we knew no. You don't get too many opportunities like this and it was a long wait, but at the end it, it came at the best moment. We still have a lot to do and a lot to work to do and, and we're excited about it, but it feels amazing to be able to achieve this title here with, uh, with the team and with Jordi. It feels really special. So at the end of an amazing week at Club Nautic Saranel, we have Spain winning gold, a surprising silver for Great Britain and bronze for Japan. An absolutely amazing week of competition in a range of conditions and a great start to the Olympic season. Day one of the 2024 Formula Kite European Championship was a critical day for finding out how well riders had spent their winter training time over the past few months. The huge saltwater lagoon of Mar Mena in Spain provides conditions for going fast in flat water, but it was still a deceptively complex racecourse at times during the sunny afternoon. With the breeze pulsing between 3 and 15 knots, there was never a time for relaxing or settling into a predictable pattern. Day one of the Europeans was the beginning of a final four-month push to Paris 2024. Marmenor, Spain is for many riders part of their Olympic selection trials and you could sense that every moment matters, especially for riders who are new on the scene. I feel like I've progressed so much, but still, maybe I lack some consistency. I'm, I'm not really sure where I'm standing at at the moment. And what of Valentin Bontus, the Austrian rider who made such huge leaps in performance last season? We have the ability to be there. We know we have the speed and everything to, to do it. Let's hope I can put all the, all the pieces together and uh, get a great regard out of it. Fast out of the blocks in the women was France's Poema Newland, winning her first race and coming second in the next two. Almost as good was Gal Zuckerman with three scores in the top three. As for Mafalda, a fifth place in one race was a good reward for her winter of hard training. In the men, Max Maeder from Singapore and Italy's Riccardo Pianozzi are looking typically strong. 
As for Valentin Bontus, two bullets was not too bad either. I managed to get two bullets, so I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, shows that I think we did the, the work done in the winter. Deputy Race Director Dale Smith and Qingdao skipper Philip Quinn gives details on what lies ahead on this race from Zhuhai to Qingdao. Then we have a report on day two of the race from boat Qingdao. It was a big two days of weather and obstacles like passing floating oil rigs. So we've uh, just finished our skipper brief here the day before race start in Zhuhai. Uh, the, the skips certainly have a pretty interesting race ahead of them, uh, about 1,340 miles. Look at it, the distance, it's, we're likely to be out for about nine days. Uh, I would like to make it quicker, but I don't know that that'll happen. We'll see, we'll see. This is probably one of the more challenging races of, of the circumnavigation, predominantly an upwind race. Um, and there is a strong ocean current that runs uh, off the eastern side of Taiwan. So that, that traditionally causes pretty steep, harsh sea states. It'll be very special going into Qingdao on the Qingdao boat uh, with our ambassador actually as a watch leader. Uh, so that will be, it'll be emotional for everyone, I, I think. It's day two on Qingdao. It's been a fairly uncomfortable first couple of days. Uh, last night was super interesting. We ended up passing an oil platform being towed by two tugboats. Uh, that was pretty, um, pretty, pretty cool. And then today, the wind started picking up quite a lot. Uh, I think we had 36 knots of apparent wind, uh, and the waves have been quite choppy and random, which makes helming quite difficult. And it's making every, everyday life on the boat quite, quite hard. Um, everyone seems to be in good spirits still, and we keep pushing on. We're expecting about 40 knots tonight, uh, with three meter waves, so it's gonna get a bit, a bit feisty, but we're looking forward to it. Uh, pretty tough going, to be honest, upwind sailing, um, really uh, sailing tight to the wind. Uh, makes for a pretty uncomfortable time, got a few people, including myself, who aren't doing so good and uh, suffering a bit of seasickness. Uh, normally, uh, you come out of it after a few days and I think uh, the wind conditions are going to change once we uh, come around the bottom of Taiwan um, and just will make it a little easier for us all, but uh, struggling a bit at the moment. but. Hoping we'll pick up in the next few days. We just made a tag and uh, the wind is pretty strong. And so far, so good. It's a really good tag, really successful. Good work, guys. I haven't been like this for a while. So, happy to be here. Switch, switch, switch. switch. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, it's quite busy, yeah? So, at the minute, we are in here. If we zoom in. We're in here. Um, we are at the front. We've been at the front nearly from about a few hours in. Um, it's not easy. We're not far in front. In fact, only 3.2 miles. So it's uh, it's early days, very very early, and we'll not get too excited about that yet. The second day of racing at the 2024 Etchells World Championships saw a big change in conditions and bigger gains across the scoreboard. Two more races were completed, this time in a 15 to 20 knot easterly with flatter water and slightly longer courses. Here is event host, Sue Ellen Hurling. Oysters were blown off rocks yesterday for the opening races of the 2024 Etchells World Championships here in Fremantle, but things are meant to calm down today, but just a little bit. Laurie Smith and his Alfie team from Great Britain are currently tied in first place with no dramas, both boats on seven points. Two races are scheduled today and the predicted forecast is saying we're going to see conditions from about 15 to 20 knots from the east, a stark contrast to what we had on the course yesterday. There is still plenty to play for here in Fremantle for the 2024 World Championships and it's anyone's game. There's a lot of people that actually make an event like this happen, so we need to give a shout out to the clubs that have actually come together to pull this World Championships into one amazing event. The Royal Freshwater Bay Yacht Club, who are the organising authority, Fremantle Sailing Club, who are the hosts, and with a massive amount of support from Royal Perth Yacht Club. So a huge thank you to those clubs for making this event possible. It takes a village!
good. Stay tuned for updates throughout the day. There is still plenty to play for and we can't wait to bring you all the action from the race course.